Brunch is trying to straight copy and paste Clemson in Oklahoma. What's going on, people? Welcome back to Reject Reef, and I got another banger video for you guys today. Let's be special, baby. Let's be special. So what's going on, guys? I want to show you a uh, small little video clip from uh, Brent and Venables. I'll put that on now. There ain't no easy way to get there. It won't be a championship program. Okay, we got to put the work in today, and that's what this is all about. So from that short little video clip, what stands out to you guys? Well, the first thing that stood out to me right away was that banner behind him. That, that banner there, you know, looks very familiar to one that's at Clemson's practice facility, too. I'll put that up right now. Yes, it is that one. Also, that Believe statue right in front of him. What does that look familiar to? Yep, looks familiar to that, too. So obviously, uh, Brent's trying to bring over some certain aspects of Clemson's culture over there. I'm sure he talked to Dabo about it, you know, most likely. But it's just like, ah, oh, come on, Brent. Let's let's come up with our own sayings here. Let's let's come up with something unique to the program instead of just you know trying to copy and paste take somebody else's. Because if we're if you want to say, okay, he's using the slogans. All right, all right, all right. Well, he also took this from Clemson. Hey, let's go. Hey, y'all, little thing, y'all, Good job, good job, man. Good job, man. Okay. Now, if you can't tell from that video clip, they were saying all in. And any Clemson fan knows that, you know, all in is Davos' thing. They put the little poker chip in, beginning of the bucket, beginning of the game, signifying they are all in, putting all the chips on the table. They are all in for this game, all in for the team, all in for securing the victory. So it's just interesting that, you know, Brent's kind of taking this. I, I'm surprised he wouldn't want to come up with his own kind of, you know, his little sayings, motivational things for the teams to look at that would be unique to Oklahoma. That would be defining to Oklahoma rather than just taking somebody else's. Because, I mean, but, Brent, if you want to use Let's Be Special, I would be more than happy to uh, sign off on that. You know, maybe give me an interview, a tour maybe, or some, some content for the channel. I'll be more than happy to let you use the uh, let's be special, baby. Let's be special, baby. You know, it's just kind of uh, interesting to me. I really thought that he would probably try to put his uh, own spin on things at Oklahoma. He kind of make it his own, but I guess he must have really liked the way Dabo did things. So it's probably, uh, obviously, you know, a lot of coaches over there too from Clemson, but I mean, we've gotten to that before. But another cool thing that stood out to me from watching you know, kind of some Oklahoma videos was the helmet that quarterback Dylan Gabriel was using. So the helmet that Dylan Gabriel is using is the new Riddell Axiom. And it's got some cool features to it. As you can see, it's kind of a little unique. They don't have the crossbar up top. It's got a big visor on it. But, I mean, some certain aspects of it I'll put up on the screen now. Is it's got the uh, Riddell True Fit system, which they had this in the Speed Flex, where it was just kind of, you know, they map the player's head and then they, they can, you know, customize the helmet to the player so there's not like foam fitting or air adjustments. They kind of scan the player's head, so they've had that. Then the uh, Surround Flex system, they had put in the Speed Flex as well, just kind of the ability for the shell of the helmet to bend and move a little bit, you know, gives some more uh, flexibility. It was made back in 2014. Now, this is interesting. So the, the True View Frontal Protection System. So essentially, they just took out the crossbar up top and put a, a big visor on the helmet that comes like standard. You can't take the visor off and play with it. The visor comes standard as part of the helmet. But I'm sure they tested it, but you know what happens if somebody takes a monster hit to that visor and it cracks, maybe shatters a little bit, and there's just stuff all over there. I mean, I just, I, I don't know. I mean, usually with football helmet visors, you can, you know, pop them on, pop them off, no problem. But I don't know if this is integrated into the helmet. I haven't quite seen them in person, so I, I can't speak from experience what the visor looks like. I'm sure there's a way to screw it in, screw it out. But it just seems like it's a, you know, a big visor. There's not any bars protecting it. So it just seems like a big target area. So if somebody takes a helmet, the helmet shot, cracks that visor, can they replace it? Or is he gonna be stuck playing, you know, a drive or multiple drives with, you know, a crack or maybe shattered visor that could obscure his vision? We'll see, we'll see how the uh, how that goes during the season. But I think the coolest thing though, is the uh, Institute of Technology and Analytics into it. So essentially they kind of just put some sensors and some chips in there that allow them to kind of monitor the force and the compression of the helmet try to give you know a better understanding of concussions as you know there's been a big push for a CTE which has been great for football you know it's been great to you know revitalize the sport encourage 
you know, head healthy football play, heads up football, protect your head. But it's just kind of an, another step in the right direction of you know integrating technology into the football equipment for player safety. I mean, and the analytics allow us to you know explore player analysis, how much force they're taking, are we doing what we can to protect them? Have they taken too big of a hit, and do we need to you know evaluate them for something? Now, there's been you know similar technology like this before, but it's just kind of cool that it's kind of becoming standard in these helmets. But I mean, look at uh, Luke Keekley used to wear that neck brace. I'm surprised nothing ever became of it. Maybe it wasn't. It was like a prototype neck brace with a thought process behind it. So it compressed the jugular in your neck, uh, allowing the uh, blood to kind of, more blood to kind of congregate in your head and create more of a cushion for when you took hits. And it was supposed to help, you know, decrease concussions. You know, get, you'd get less movement of the brain in your head with more blood in there. So it just kind of, you know, act as like, a little jello to kind of re reduce the movement but i'm surprised that didn't catch on more maybe they did some more research on it and it didn't work out because when luke was wearing it, it was just kind of a prototype and luke was you know very concerned about protecting his head that's ultimately why he stepped away from the games he was just done with it he's taking too many hits to the head he's like I, I can't play this fast and hard anymore but the equipment is super cool that's all i got for today guys as always have a great day tell somebody you love them deuces